good day students so it's again a beautiful day to start with and a great topic for today because we are going to tackle the historical antecedents of science and technology I have uh, found a good resource prepared by Professor Liwai Wai Memiha Cruz okay, and I think it's a good presentation that uh, she made for this subject science technology and society so let's begin on the introduction part so and let's define what is science uh, since we are we are already in elementary you are studying about science okay and science is defined as the concerted human effort to understand or to understand better the history of the natural world and how the natural world works with observable physical evidence as the basis of the understanding so there are a lot of uh, things that science reveals and how it works okay so paano sila nag gumagana paano sila nag work paano siya paano yung isang bagay eh, it happens and it was uh, defined or it was explained by the virtue of science okay and another definition is done through science done through observation of natural phenomena and or through experimentation that tries to simulate natural processes under controlled conditions so involved experimentations okay and observations so that is science to understand things okay so science and technology on the other hand is define as first we will define science is a knowledge about or a study of the natural world based on facts learned through experiments and observations so the true word here the two word here is experiment and observations and another one is technology which is science or knowledge put into practical use to solve problems or invent useful tools so um, the invention of the internet, the invention of, of cell phone, the invention of uh, maybe the uh, ball pen, no? as simple as ball pen, is already a technology. Okay, is already a technology, and in the sense that it is a uh, useful because it creates or it um, modifies the uh, system or the uh, way of or the practical way okay so example that is uh, on our first uh, decades so old stone like for example is a ginagamit nilang panulat or papel noon is yung mga dahon ng mga uh, plants dahon ng saging okay but because of technology they invented the paper Okay. the intermediate paper like for example so that is an example of useful tools so every useful tools that give is give um, <clears throat> another useful uh, purpose is a technology okay so that's it so how is science used in technology Science is the pursuit of knowledge about the natural world through systematic observation and experiments. Through science, we develop new technologies. Okay. We discovered a thing and we will use this discovery into application. And that application is a technology. Technology is the application of scientific gained knowledge for practical purpose. Speaking of application. Scientists use technology in all their experiments. Okay, so but um, it's not just a one-way uh, process, but also the vice versa. 
because science is also used the product of science to their experimentations so, ibig sabihin technology is also used for science ganun lang kasimple technology is used for science so, it's also a vice versa okay so the role of science and technology is first is to alter the way people live or connect communicate and transact with profound effect on economic development the second one is key drivers to development because technology and scientific revolution underpin economic advances advances improvements in health systems education infrastructure so science and technology is the drivers to development okay so, we don't have a good um, uh, a good road if we don't have science and technology we don't have a good uh, transportation if we don't have science and technology and a lot more so that is science and technology the third one is the technological revolution of the first 21st century are emerging from entirely new sectors based on microprocessors telecommunications biotechnology and nanotechnology products are transforming because practices across the economy as well as the lives of all who have access to their efforts effect, effects to their effects the most remarkable breakthroughs will come from the interaction of insights and applications arising when these technologies converge so for this example i have seen a post in the instagram wherein the mm, uh, the tawag nito yung storage of or a storage of 5 MB now is uh, I think there's no exist hindi na siya nag-exist yung 5 MB ngayon pero noong unang panahon ang bumubuhat ng isang <clears throat> 5 MB storage is more than 20 uh, more than 20 na tao but now even the ants can carry this kind of technology okay so maybe i can share to you on our uh group yung sinasabi ko dito ano? and the fourth one is have the power to better the lives of poor people in developing countries so because of science and technology we can derive the best solution Okay, the best solution for each problems that can alter or that can make better the, uh, li the lives of pe poor people in developing countries. An example for this is in under Instagram, I have followed a user wherein uh, he or she uh, posts the different um, water treatment in the uh, in Africa and I can see there that there is a development a science and technology because Africa is one of the most scarce in terms of water okay so differentiators between countries that are able to tackle poverty effectively by growing and developing their economies and those that are not the sixth one is engine of growth. Okay? Halos magkaka magkakaparehas lang ito. So, noon, ang, ang example natin dito is noon, kailangan yung isang dalawang animal is they have to mate or they have to mate physically. Okay? They have to have a sex. Okay? To produce their springs. But nowadays, because of artificial inseminations, you don't need to conduct such. Okay? So that is growth. Interventions for cognitive enhancement, proton cancer therapy, and genetic engineering. So, uh, one example for this is I, I, I want to share my, my experience wherein I was operated in a case 
uh, appendicitis at my grade 6 were in the manually uh, operated me kung baga talagang uh, dinait da, iniwa da, dinait da, and so on. And then, 10 years from that day, or, yeah, from that year, my father was also operated, and you know what, hindi siya, na, hindi siya tinahe, yung sugat niya, yung, yung sugat niya is hindi niya, hindi nila tinahe. True laser, okay, true laser, wala kang makikitang uh, trace ng tahe. So, nakaka nakaka unfair <laughs> kasi ang pangit ng tahi ko sa kanya ang ganda parang ano lang hiwa na walang wala ka man lang makitang tahi ganun so, that is technology na no? that is technology and this is the society okay. the society is the sum total of our interaction as a humans including the interaction interaction that we engage in to figure things out and to make things make and to make things okay and so society is a group of individuals involved in persistent social interaction or a large social group sharing the same geographical or social ter territory typically subject to the same political authority and dominant cultural expectations so Take note for that group. Okay, society is a group of individuals. So that is considered as a uh, society if there is a persistent social interaction, a large social group, okay, with the same geographical or social territory, typically subject to the same political authority and dominant culture, cultural expectations. Ilocos Norte is Ilocos Norte people are a society. Uh, the Batakenyo is a society. The Pawayenyo is a society. And a lot more. For that, that is an example. What does science, technology, and so uh, society mean? What does science, technology, and society mean? So, ano ba itong subject na ito, no? na STS? Science and Technology Studies or Science, Technology, and Society Studies is the study of how society, politics, and culture affects scientific research and technological innovations and how this in turn affects society, politics, politics, and cultures. In our longer year, no, we, or in our early year or maybe early year in education we see science and technology as a good one okay what we see is the product the, the product of science and technology those that are available in the market those that are uh, politically um, uh, managed okay those that are good result but eventually we are um, exposed to the, um, the the side effect of science and technology and an example for that is the global warming the climate change we're in in our early days we are not exposed or they don't publish about this side effect of science and technology or maybe they cannot see what's the effect of science and technology so for this matter we want to study not just the good part okay? not just the, the the success part but we are going also to see what are the failure of science and technology that's why uh, the government want to include science technology and society so so that the young ones knows what is now um, what what is happening in the world ano yung nangyayari sa atin ano nangyayari sa society in terms of science and technology so 
Science and technology studies is a relative recent discipline originating in the 60s and 70s following consensus structure of scientific revolution in 1962. Okay. So, STS was the result of a sociological turn in science studies. STS makes the assumptions that science and technology are essentially intertwined and that they are each profoundly social and profoundly political. Okay. Noon pa man ay nag-exist nag na to, pero hindi, hindi man lang siya <clears throat> nai-include sa studies ng uh, university. Okay. Nai-include siya, pero part of a subject. Okay. Part of a subject. <clears throat> so, how the question now is how science and technology affect society. The number one question for this is that science, because of science and technology, or because of society, I should say, because of society, there is science and technology. Human being wants to... to um, Enhance how he live or he sh she lives. That's why he wants to understand things. And upon understanding, she wants to develop a technology to make better, to make better lives, to make better life. <clears throat> so now, that is the um, reverse, or that is the forward line. How about if we look on the backward line? What I mean is, how does science and technology affect society? That impact because of society, we have science and technology. Science and technology have had a major impact on society and their impact is growing. Okay. So, this is already a reverse effect okay. that in fact in the in our early days because of society we have science and technology but now we will try to study what if <coughs> what is the impact of science and technology to the society and it's growing okay. it's growing sabi nga doon Meron tinatawag daw na another world wherein it is versatile, it is fast changing, okay. mabilis yung pagbabago, variability, maraming pagkakaiba-iba. So, so by, by making life easier, science has given man the chance to pursue societal concerns such as ethics, aesthetics, education, and justice. To create cultures and to improve human conditions. Science influences society through its knowledge and worldview. Scientific knowledge and the procedure used by scientists influence the way many individuals in society think about themselves, others, and the environment. The effect of science and the effect of science on society is neither entirely beneficial nor entirely detrimental. So now, how science can have an effect on society? Okay. Let's try to see what, what is the effect of science. Science influences society through its knowledge and worldview. Scientific knowledge and the procedures used by scientists, scientists influence the way many individuals in society think about themselves, others, and the environment. So through the scientific knowledge, we can, uh, the scientists can influence individuals okay, how to understand, understand themselves, understand the others, okay, under the, understand the environment. Because of science procedure, scientific knowledge, we know that uh, our, um, the way we treat our Waste material affects the environment. The way we think ourselves 
affects or the way we think or the scientific knowledge affects how we think ourselves, others. We understand why yung isang tao ay nagagalit. We understand why yung isang tao ay mahal ka. We understand why uh, people are poor. People, people are way rich. And that is because science, scientific knowledge. The effect of science on society is neither entirely beneficial nor entirely detrimental. Sometimes, ano yung sinasabi ko? Sometimes it's beneficial. Sometimes it's detrimental. An example for this is that um, suicidal suicides. Meron akong nabasa si knows ni Governor Manotok na nag-i-increase daw ng suicide, suicide sa province. And common daw is yung mga uh, millennial, yung mga early millennials, kami. And that is because of stress. Napapansin ko rin, no? Compared ko, if you know, compared ko sa mga matatanda. Compared sa aming mga young ones, sa tawag nito, sa Uh, faculty is yung mga matatanda parang hindi sila na na-stress pero hindi halata kami parang halatang halata na stress no? and I will I will explain why later on sabi ni Manotok that maraming day, marami daw mga suicide case at nag increase and I don't think that is because of COVID no Uh, okay, um, as I said, is that maraming mga tumataas yung societal uh, part or societal mga suicide individual. Okay, so uh, for me is that I have um, this is just an opinion na eh? hindi siya tested. Kung baga in terms of science, it is hypothesis. Okay, it is hypothesis. And this increasing suicide, blah blah, is because of the effect of social media. Okay, the effect of social media. Uh, people nowadays relying now to the approval of the social media. May mga tao dyan na they document each okay, each na ginagawa nila everyday, daily, daily basis sila nagmamay day, daily basis sila nag nagpo-post and I think that is one of the reason why the increasing suicides is really happening okay. and maybe it's not just the side effect of the social media na titignan natin because social media is also has a variety of um, purpose like for example is that we can seek the um, yung pakikiramay ng mga friend natin na kahit wala sila sa tabi natin is that we can connect to them and we can lessen the stress, like for example. But we cannot deny the fact that my idea is that social media is also affecting our or maybe making it worse to some okay, yung kanila, yung, yung ating depression and anxiety. So, what is the relationship between science and society? So, now we will try to find out okay, 
or try to discuss what is the relationship between science and society. The impact of science and technology on society is evident. Nakikita naman natin kung ano yung impact. Not just on the easiness, not just on the usefulness, but also how the, the science and technology developed the society, how it changed, how, um, ba, paano niya binago, paano niya binago yung mga tao. And also, society also influences the science. Actually, that is the original part. Okay? Society is influenced as science. Because of society, there is science. Because of society, because, uh, sige, sabihin na lang natin in hard way, no? dahil maambisyon uh, yung society natin, is that. So, uh, Another one is there are social influences on the direction and emphasis of scientific and technological development through pressure groups on specific issues and through generally accepted social views, values, and priorities. Okay, so that's it for the relationship. So, the history of science and technology in the Philippines. So, let's take a simple or a more specific history on our country regarding science and technology. Okay? Science and technology in the Philippines had experienced periods of intense growth as well as long periods of stagnation. Okay? The main managing agency responsible for science and technology is the Department of Science and Technology. Okay? So they are the one responsible for the different technologies emerging technologies, existing technologies, uh, technology in the Philippines. Numerous national scientists have contributed in the different fields of science, including Fe del Mundo in the field of pediatrics, Eduardo, Eduardo Kisumbing in the field of plant taxonomy, Gavino Trona in the field of tropical marine uh, pecology, Maria Orosa in the field of fog food, technology, and many more. So, to name a few, and to be uh, proud of, the Mariano Marcos State University also uh, produced four of the scientists. And I am proud that I can say that the, the, three, out of the, the three out of the four is... Um, I, am, I have already uh, interaction with them. So... To name them, uh, Dr. Miriam E. Pasqua is a faculty of the College of Agriculture, Food and Science, Food and Sustainable Development uh, under the Department of Agri uh, Agriculture, Sci Agricultural Sciences, no? um, in the field of uh, agriculture, agricultural genetics, I think. The second one is. Uh, under again the College of Agriculture and Science, uh, Agriculture, Food and Sustainable Development, which is Dr. Stanley Malab, okay, in the field of forestry. And the third one is under the uh, roof of the College of Engineering, and the name of uh, Engineer uh, Franco, Samuel Franco in the field of uh, ceramic engineering okay so these are the scientists in the Mariano Marcos State University and the fourth one I don't know the name but uh, and what what field okay uh, Dr. Samuel Franco is a ceramic engineer as well as an agricultural engineer. So, dalawa yung BS niya. Okay. So, these are the numerous, numerous national scientists and the local national scientists. During the pre-Spanish era, even before the colonization by the Spaniards in the Philippines, 
island, Philippine island, the natives of the archipelago already had practices linked to science and technology. Okay? So, Filipinos were already aware of the medicinal and therapeutic properties of plants and the methods of extracting medicine from herbs. Okay, so they already had an alphabet number system, a weighing and a measuring system, and a calendar. So, these are technologies. These are science and technology. So, Filipinos were already engaged in farming, shipbuilding, mining, and weaving. The, one of the early technology in agriculture is the um, uh, rice to races. That is a technology. Because of science, they discovered that they can manipulate the water source in the mountainous area. Okay, and then they created that so-called rice terraces. The Banawi rice terraces are among the sophisticated products of engineering by pre Spanish era Filipinos. So speaking of the Banawi rice terraces. The colonization of the Philippines contributed to the growth of science and technology in the archipelago. I'll take note for that. The Spanish introduced formal education and founded scientific institutions. So, during the early years of the Spanish year in the Philippines, parish schools were established where religion, reading, writing, arithmetic, and music was taught. So, sanitation and more advanced methods of agriculture was taught to the natives. Okay, So, proper drainage, creation of canals, okay, uh, and so on. So those are advanced in agriculture. Later, the Spanish established colleges and universities in the archipelago, including the oldest existing university in Asia, the University of Santo Tomas, or the UST. Okay. So the galleon trade have accounted in the Philippines' colonial economy. So because of, this is one of the earliest... Um, uh, global financial system, the Gallion trade. Trade was given more, more focus by the Spaniard colonial authorities due, the, due to the prospect of big profits. Agriculture and industrial development, on the other hand, were relatively neglected. So, uh, yun din ang problema natin kahit hanggang ngayon, no? because the, the, the archipelago or the country the Philippines is an agricultural country, but we um, we continue to neglect the importance of agriculture until today. So, so in the early is, <clears throat> age, pala is nane neglect na yung agriculture. So, the opening of the Suez Canal saw the influx of European visitors to the Spanish colony and some. Okay. Filipinos were able to study in Europe who were probably influenced by the rapid development of scientific ideals brought by the age, age of enlightenment. Okay, um, in the early age, those that are with great minds and beautiful um, brains, for example, <laughs> is that <clears throat> they are sent to other countries to study and have a uh, great impact to their home country. And in agriculture, in the in the time of Marcos, I think, okay, matatakal natin mamaya yan, no? pero gusto kong i-discuss lang about sa agriculture. Those that are, <clears throat> those uh, countries like Thailand, Taiwan, no? their professionals, they send them to, to the Philippines and they study about rice. But, tignan nyo ngayon, <clears throat> yung mga technology natin na patungkol sa rice is inadapt ng Thailand and Taiwan. Ngayon, hindi na tayo yung kumukuha ng mga professionals from other countries. Tayo na yung pumupunta sa kanila. So, the development <clears throat> of technology in agriculture is really stagnant in the Philippines. During the American period, the progress of science and technology in the Philippines continued under American rule of the islands. On July 1, 1901, the Philippine Commission established the Bureau of Government Laboratories, which was placed under the Department of Interior. 
The Bureau replaced the Laboratory Municipal, which was established under the Spanish colonial era. Okay, the Bureau dealt with the study of the tropical diseases and laboratory projects. So, uh, on October 26, 1905, okay, so the Bureau of Government Laboratories was replaced by the Bureau of Science and on December 8, 1933, the National Research Council of the Philippines was established. Okay? The Bureau of Science became the primary research hub of the country. Okay? I'm sorry for that. Medyo naputol. So, during the post-Commonwealth era, during the 1970s, which was under the time of Ferdinand Marcos presidency, the importance given to science grew. Okay? Nag-focus yung ating Pangulong Marcos noon sa science technology. Under the 1973 Philippine Constitution, no? Article 15, Section 1, the government's role in supporting scientific research and invention was acknowledged. Okay? In 1974, a science technology development program was included in the government's four-year development plan which covers the years 1974 to 1978. Funding for science was also increased. Okay? The National Science Development Board was replaced by the National Science and Technology Authority under Executive Order Number no. 784. A scientific career in the civil service was introduced in 1983. During the American period, science during uh, this period was inclined towards agriculture, food processing, forestry, medicine, and pharmacy. Not much focus was given on the development of industrial technology due to free trade policy with the United States, which nurtured an economic geared towards agriculture and trade. Okay? In 1946, the Bureau of Science was replaced by the Institute of Science. Okay? In a report by a U.S. economic survey to the Philippines in 1950, there is a lack of basic information which were necessity to the country's industries, lack of support of experimental work, and minimal budget for scientific research and low salaries of scientists employed by the government. Okay. <clears throat> in 1958, during the regime of President Carlos P. Garcia, the Philippine Congress passed the Science Act of 1958, which established the science, the national science development. Okay. So, on the post Commonwealth era in 1986, during Corazon Aquino's presidency, the National Science and Technology Authority was replaced by the Department of Science and Technology, now the DOST, giving science and technology a representation in the cabinet. Under the medium-term <clears throat> Philippine Development Plan for the years 1987 to 1992, science and technology's role in economic recovery and sustained economic growth was highlighted. Okay? During Corazon Aquino <clears throat> State of the Nation Address in 1990, she said that science and technology development shall be one of the three priorities of the government towards an economic recovery. In August 8, 1988, Corazon Aquino created the Presidential Task Force for Science and Technology which came up with the first Science and Technology Master Plan or the STMP. Okay? The goal of the STMP was the Philippines to achieve newly industrialized country status by the year 2000. Okay? The Congress did not put much priority in handling bills related to science and technology. The Senate Committee in Science and Technology was one of the committees that handles the least amount of bills for deliberation. The former Science and Technology Secretary, Seferin Folosco, reported that the budget allocations for science and technology was increased to 1.054 billion pesos in 1989 from the previous years of 464 million pesos. So, it doubles. It doubles. And... However, due to the Asian financial crisis, budget allocation for the years 1990 and 1991 were trimmed down to 920 and 154 million pesos respectively. Okay. Budget allocation were increased to 1.7 billion pesos in 1992. So there is a paradigm shift na tinatawag in history. Okay. 
a typical example of a pattern of something. So, so let's define a paradigm. Okay. This is a typical example of pattern or something. Okay. So, like for example, a process. Self-image, money, weight, success, relationship, confidence. So, this is a paradigm, a distinct set of concept or thought patterns including theories, research methods, postulates, and standards for what constitute legitimate contributions to a field. Okay? So, what is a paradigm shift? This is a fundamental change in approach of underlying assumptions. Okay? A concept identified by the American physicist and philosopher Thomas Kuhn. A fundamental change in the basic concept and experimental practices of scientific discipline. Okay? The scientific or the American physicist Kuhn presented his notion of the paradigm shift in his influential book, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions, 1962. Why is it important? Paradigm shift is another expression for more significant changes within belief systems. Within philosophy of science, this concept is sometimes considered important and is sometimes given great attention within education. Okay? This is the Kohn's paradigm. Uh, Thomas Samuel Kohn okay, was an American physicist, historian, and a philosopher of science whose controversial 1962 book The Structure of Scientific Revolution was influential in both academic and popular circles. Okay? A book about the historical of science by philosopher Thomas S. Kuhn. This is the book if you if you want to download it. Okay? Its publication was a landmark event in the history, philosophy, and sociology of scientific knowledge. This is the Kuhn cycle press science and the normal science and then a model trip and then a model crisis next is a model revolution and a paradigm change so press science for example is that uh, the normal way the normal or the <clears throat> like for example we lived we just living nabubuhay lang tayo Parang normal lang. And then normal science that we discover the problem. We want to solve a problem. Model drifts that we will give a solution. Okay? We will give a solution. This is a solution. This is a to, to, for the normal science, for the problem, for the discovery. Okay? The next is model crisis. There is a crisis from the model. We need a model revolution. So that's now the paradigm change. And then another one, the normal science again. And it's. Paulit ulit yan, paulit ulit ng paulit. A simple cycle of progress described by Thomas Kuhn in 1962 in his seminal work, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions. So, in structure, Kuhn challenged the word's current conception of science, which was it was a steady progression of the accumulation of new ideas. The Kuhn's paradigm shows this viewpoint was wrong. Science advanced the most by occasional revolutionary explosions of new knowledge. Each revolution triggered by the introduction of new ways of thoughts so large they must be called new paradigms. Okay, uh, okay I'm sorry. Uh, nawala. So, ayan. So, Co argues that paradigms change in scientific revolutions. Okay? Scientists go through a crisis and transition to a new paradigm, a new way of seeing the world. It is not possible to compare paradigms and it is not possible to say whether one is more right than the other. other. So, this paradigm na sinasabi ni Kons, na, ni Kons is that she's trying to uh, or she's demonstrating that a model okay a model a developed model through the new through the new um tawag nito, the, the, the normal i should say to the normal science no is that nagkakaroon ng crisis okay and then from that crisis 
um, gumagawa siya ng shift of paradigm, paradigm shift. So, para ma- ma- makuha or ma-, ma ma fulfill yung crisis na ito. Okay? So, ayan. Uh, asan na tayo? So, ko Kuhn argues that science is not moved by a rational process, but more by a social unity. In contrast with Popper, then Kuhn presents a descriptive theory in which Kuhn try understand how they function in practice. So, okay, let's try to explain step by step, no? So, the steps of the Kuhn cycle. So, first, we have the so-called prescience also called the pre-paradigm stage. Okay, the pre-step to the main con cycle in pre-science, there is not yet a model of understanding. The field's paradigm mature enough to solve the field's man, main problems. Okay, so wala pa siyang model yung sinasabi dito na kumbaga a solution for the problem. Kumbaga, yeah, um, it's a trial and error from this press science no the field has no workable paradigm to successfully guide its work so it's a trial and error actually so normal science under normal science identified and elaborated on by uh, Thomas Samuel Kohn in the structure of scientific revolution is the regular work of scientists theorizing theorizing okay observing and experimenting within a settled paradigm or explanatory framework. Ito na yung tinatawag natin um, theoretical uh, framework. Okay? Ito na yung may mga hypothesis. We have the experiment. We have to set uh, values. We have already the process to evaluate okay, or to set a model. And this uh, <coughs> field is a scientifically based model of understanding that works. So, ito na yung parang maglalagay na tayo ng isang scientific findings model. Okay? Magkoconclude na tayo at magkakaroon na tayo ng isang result <clears throat> to solve a problem. Okay? Under model drift, no, the model of understanding starts to drift. Due to accumulation of anomalies and phenomena, the model cannot explain. So, ito na yung from that um, solution, meron na naman ulit nagkakaroon na naman ulit ng ibang drift. Okay? Nagkakaroon na naman ulit ng isang uh, different environment. Like for example, so I will uh, let's try to give an example later on. No. So this is the model drift. Next is the model crisis. The most important step of them all in the con cycle. So ito na yung the, the drift is worsen. Okay? Nagiging worse na yung drift na ito. So, nagkakaroon, nagiging crisis na ito. No? The model drift becomes so excessive, the model is broken. So, the model is not, the, 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 the solution is not uh, applicable for a specific uh, period of time. So, like for example, kapag ngayon, noon, no, applicable pa yung yung text, 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 mail, mail, no? padala, 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 Ngayon, hindi na applicable kasi meron na tayong mga email. Like for example, meron na tayong mga phone na touch screen. So, this is the crisis. Na, na, ito na yung crisis of the model mailing. Okay? The, the, uh, tawag nito sa munisipyo. Yung, yung municipal... Uh, uh, <laughs> kalimutan ko na. <laughs> Okay, so, yun, yun, yung, ano, yung, yung, hindi na siya applicable for this time, no? So, this is now the problem. Uh, ito na yung crisis, no? It can no longer serve as reliable guide to problem solving. Yan, tama. So, attempts to patch the model up to make it work fail. The field is in anguish, anguish. So. And then next is the model revolution begins when serious candidates for a new model emerge. Okay? It's a revolution because the new model is so radically different from the old one. So, like for example, the keypad versus the touchscreen. Okay? Kaya nalugi yung Nokia kasi wala naman silang inventions. Eh. Yun yung naging, nagkaroon ng crisis in terms of phone and that crisis hindi nasama yung Nokia so, for, for the revolutions. 
Okay, so that's not. So, a field's model of understanding is undergoing revolutionary change. The old model failed, which caused the model crisis step. So, yan yung sinasabi ko sa inyo na nag-fail yung 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 model. Then, meron na tayo because of uh, of the crisis. Okay. So, the model revolution step begins when one or more competing new models emerge from the crisis. And then now is because of that revolution we have now the paradigm change also called a paradigm shift. Earlier steps have created the new model of understanding, the new paradigm. In the paradigm change step the new change step the new paradigm is taught to newcomers to the field as well as to excuse me uh, as well as to those already in it when the new paradigm becomes the generally accepted guide to one's work this step is complete the field is now back to the normal science step and a con cycle is complete so babalik na naman sa normal science magkakaroon ng model drift magkakaroon ng crisis ngayon, meron ng enter ng technology like for example meron ng revolution and that is now the more paradigm change and again and again and again. So, yan, that is the model of con cycle. Okay, that is the, the, what uh, once Thomas want to understand. Okay. So, I have provided here or the author of this uh, provided a YouTube videos uh, as follows. The Stephen Colbert's interview with Neil Neil Tyson, the world's greatest invention, the Philippine great inventions, the scientific reduction, re reductionism, and the what is a paradigm. So, if you want to know more about this thing, okay, this previous topic that we I discussed, try to watch this YouTube videos. Okay, let's try to to have an example for this paradigm shift. Okay. So let's try to trace some historical examples of paradigms now in society in terms of ethics. Slavery is unacceptable to now is slavery being unacceptable. So that is one. Okay? Role of children in society, child labor was now is not acceptable. No on talagang napaka ano yan. Male superiority, this is an example, no? Beating wives was, now is not acceptable. Okay? Noon kasi is na itatago natin, no? Kaya na, noon, kaya nilang, uh, kaya nilang uh, awayin, kaya nilang suntukin yung mga asawa. Pero ngayon, medyo, yung mga asawa pa nga, yung mga, ano eh, yung mga asawa pa nga, yung mga nag, nag ano na, Sila na yung nang, nang bubuli ng mga lalaki. Okay. And they also they also demand for equal. For example is, noon may karapatan ang lalaki na sila lang dapat yung magtrabaho at si babae sila dapat yung mag-ayos-ayos sa bahay. Pero ngayon hindi na. Okay. So that is an example. There is a paradigm shift from that. Okay. So, pero ang masama dito, <laughs> hindi naman masama siguro. Noon, ang lalaki, dapat siya yung nanliligaw. Pero ngayon, meron akong na-witness na pati babae, nanliligaw. How's that? May kakilala kayong ganyan? Nako, isipin nyo na lang, bahala kayo dyan. Okay? <laughs> so, next is reading and, the, reading and the control over information. Invention of the printing press and or and other major inventions allowed for the elites control over reading or writing to end okay the reformation broke monopoly of catholic church and christian's relationship with god so marami nang mga ano marami nang mga tumiwalag sa catholic and then nagcreate sila ng sarili nilang mga uh, <clears throat> mga tawag nito mga um, Christian fellowship. So, like for example, we have the Baptist, etc. So, ayaw kong sabi or ayaw kong i-discuss to kasi baka maraming maga. No? We have different um, religious 
uh, or we have different religion. Okay, so hindi na natin didiscuss yan. So. Natural sciences. In the natural sciences, Darwin's theory of evolution. Yan. So, sabi niya, ang tao daw ay nanggaling sa unggoy. So, ibig sabihin, unggoy tayo lahat. Okay. Plate tectonics. Create a physical model of the earth structure. Nung bata ako, nakala ko sa mundo plat. Ini-imagine ko kung gaano siya kalayo yung mapupuntaan ko pag lalakarin ko yun. Or kapag tinitingnan ko yung uh, ocean, bakit kaya bumabagsak doon sa part na yun? Parang ganun. Ini-imagine ko pa nga yung tubig na parang bumabagsak doon na parang falls. Tapos pupunta tayo doon, may rock doon, tapos magpicture-picture kayo doon. Di ba? Napaka-wide yung ano namin. Pero ngayon, because of physics, the earth structure revealed na siya ay isang sphere pala. Okay. Albert Einstein's space-time is not fixed or objective, subject to the observer's state of motion relative to other object. Okay? Ito yung mga giants ng Darwin, Einstein, Isaac. Okay? Sana kapag nabuhay ako doon, eh, di Julius Jimenez din, di ba? Pero ano kayang madidiscover ko? <laughs> Abangan! Human science, psychology, na Sigmund Freud, we are not fully in control of our behavior, a subconscious part operate. Okay? In economics, government intervention in economy is now accepted. Yan. So, noon, hindi na ano, diba? Ayaw nila ng ano. Hindi nyo ba alam, noong unang panahon, walang tax-tax. But because of war, nagkaroon ng tax to support the development of different war equipment. Yan. Yan yung dahilan kung bakit mayroong tax, tax. Okay? <clears throat> the arts. The realist paradigm, the purpose of art is to comp copy reality. <clears throat> Shakespeare's impact on drama and theater. That is another. Jazz and rock revolutionizing music. Another. Sa dinami-dami nung hindi ko na alam mga um, term or mga examples for that. Kasi napakalawak ng science technology guys. <clears throat> Ito na lang. Bibigyan ko kayo ng mga bibliography. Okay. Na pwede niyo yung basahin kung interesado kayo. Okay. At dapat maging interesado kayo. Okay. So, that's it for our class or our topic for today. And I hope marami kayong natutungan for this and please um um Wait again for the next topic that we will discuss and good day for every one of us. God bless.